weeks after, so we can go ahead and um, get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the 2023 uh, Native Scholarship Forum uh, presented by the National Native Scholarship Providers. Uh, that consists of organizations uh, Native Forward, the American Indian College Fund, um, ACES, and uh, the Gobel Scholarship. Uh, we have a lot of um, awesome information uh, to share with you this evening, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, each organization is going to present, and if you can use the Q&A feature uh, to uh, put all of your questions um, in, in that section, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. And after we present, we'll answer um, uh, our questions from each organization. And at the end of uh, all the presentations, we will uh, answer some further questions. And if you can, uh, you know, just kind of put who you're uh, uh, forwarding the, you know, the question to, which organization, which presentation, I'll probably make it easier uh, at the end of our um, uh, presentation, answer your questions to the best of our ability. But I'm uh, Ben Molzon, and I'm the program administrator uh, for engagement and communications at the College Fund. And I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen. Everyone see that okay? Oh. Let's see if that worked. I think that worked. <laughs> so at the American Indian uh, College Fund, uh, we have one scholarship application. And so our application opens every single year um, on February 1st, and the deadline is uh, May 31st. And you can find um, all of our information on scholarships at collegefund.org slash scholarships. So we offer over um, 100 uh, scholarship opportunities. It's under the one application you'll find on our website at collegefund.org slash scholarships. Um, for eligibility, you have to be a US citizen, a tribal member, or a descendant um, uh, from your uh, one of your family members, uh, maybe parents or grandparents, and then uh, from a state or federally recognized tribe, and then a 2.0 GPA. Uh, you also have to be a, a full-time student um, attending either a uh, a nonprofit um, organization uh, in school, whether it's a tribal college, um, a university, um, a private institution. So uh, to apply, you'll need uh, a few things. Uh, we ask for kind of a professional photo, um, you know, no selfies, but uh, something that you're comfortable with, uh, you know, sharing and presenting to, uh, you know, the donors that um, fund our scholarships. Um, a proof of tribal enrollment um, and or your uh, the descendancy and then a, a transcript of your grades from your previous school. Um, and it doesn't have to be an official one. You can get that from the registrar um, uh, from your high school, um, if you're a high school student going into college or um, if you're a college student um, applying to our scholarships. Um, one of our larger sections on the, the application um, is our reflection questions. Uh, so this is a chance for you to share your unique story and goals. Um, you know, we want you to answer questions clearly, completely, um, and compellingly, and then uh, focus on you know descriptive language, uh, different ideas, and uh, you know technical conventions. Uh, those questions are: What challenges have you overcome to attend college? Uh, what are your educational career goals, and how will this scholarship help you achieve them? And how will you use your education to impact your native nation or or Indian country? We also have um, a full scholarship walkthrough video. Um, that's on our website. Um, and I'll drop that in uh, the chat after I'm, I'm done here. Um, but you can also find that on our website at collegefund.org uh, slash scholarships. And it's about um, a six minute video that does a step-by-step -step process of you know, how you can apply um, all the eligibility requirements and, um, and uh, you know, what, what scholarships we offer as well and um, the whole process itself. Um, at the College Fund, uh, we also, um, for scholarship recipients, um, offer additional student support. 
um, like coaching um, and other resources, um, internship placement and career planning resources, um, and conference and event opportunities. Um, and scholars can even apply to our College Fund uh, Student Ambassador Program, where we select a group of students to um, kind of be ambassadors of our um, of the College Fund and you know present on ideas of the College Fund and attend our um, events and be kind of representatives of the College Fund. And um, if you want to stay up to date on a lot of our different events and um, our scholarship opportunities and deadlines, uh, you can follow us on social media um, at, at Native Pathways. And then just have a, a section for any questions that anyone might have. So if you want to use the, the Q&A feature attached there. We'll answer any questions that anyone has and then move on to the next organization. So again, um, the website is collegefund.org slash scholarships. And a question came in, um, are any letter of recommendations needed? No, you don't um, You don't need any uh, letters of recommendation. Um, if you applied for, um, so this scholarship cycles for the fall uh, 2023, uh, spring 2024 um, uh, school year. So if you applied, um, you know, after February 1st, um, your application is for this, um, this cycle. So a, Yes, um, a recording um, will also be uh, recording this session and it'll be available to all registrants and um, we'll send it out to you all. Uh, the deadline is uh, May 31st. Um, and again, you can find all of that at uh, collegefund.org slash scholarships. And um, there's no uh, need or it's uh, more so merit-based. You just need a 2.0 uh, GPA and then those eligibility uh, requirements of um, uh, proof of tribal enrollment, um, attending a, a nonprofit institution, whether it's a tribal college, university, um, or other uh, eligible nonprofit uh, institution. I see a few questions about um, opportunities of, uh, you know, being granted the scholarships. Uh, the, the, the sooner you apply, the, the better um, for, the, um, for the scholarships. Um, you know, our, our team, you know, does a process and we have reviewers of, of the scholarships. Um, but uh, we do like when, uh, you know, students um, apply as early as possible. And the, the deadline is May 31st. And it's also for um, uh, the scholarships are for undergrads, and we also um, have scholarships for graduate students. So if you're getting your master's uh, degree or you're in a doctorate program, um, we provide scholarships as well. So um, I see a question on whether you can apply um, every year. Um, so yes, you um, every year you'll have to uh, reapply, um, but uh, we have rewarded a lot of students throughout their um, entire college career. I see questions coming in and I will answer those um, as they keep coming in. But in, for the sake of time, let's uh, move on to uh, Native Forward uh, presented by uh, Michael Bates and their opportunities. But thank you everyone. I'll keep answering all those questions in the chat. Thanks, Dan. Just to get my screen shared here. Getting 
can somebody confirm that they see the presentation? Yeah, I can see it. Good to go. Perfect. Thank you very much, Gabe. Um, so my name is Michael Bates. I am a scholarship operations manager here at Native Forward Scholars Fund. I'm originally from northeastern Oklahoma, a small town called Locust Grove. Um, and I've been on the Native Forward team for here in Albuquerque now for um, almost eight years. Just a little bit about Native Forward and who we are. Uh, so Native Forward is the largest direct scholarship provider to Native students in the United States. We award out about $15 million a year, and we've awarded over $315 million since our inception in 1969. Um, throughout our 53 plus, uh, 50 plus year history, we've awarded over 20,000 Native students from over 500 tribes in all 50 states. We've funded students at over 1,700 institutions all across the United States. And our scholarships range from $500 a year all the way up to $30,000 a year. And we support undergraduate, graduate, and professional degrees. Um, just a brief um, description here of our undergraduate scholarships. So um, we have over 40 scholarships here at Native Forward. Um, some of them are specific to where a student's from. Some of them are specific to um, a student's major. And some are not. Some are open to any student, Native student attending any school as long as they're full-time and degree seeking. So it really depends on um, your specific situation on what you're eligible for, but I can say as a native student, we have at least one scholarship you would be eligible for as long as you're enrolled full-time in the United States. And then here's a um, condensed list. This isn't all of them, but a condensed list of most of our um, graduate and professional opportunities. Again, um, we have something for every student here it really just depends on, on your specific situation. I'll kind of go in more detail with that here in a moment. Before I move on to that, though, I want to um, briefly mention our other funding opportunities. And so here at Native Forward, we have other funding opportunities for Native students beyond simply um, scholarships to pay for or help pay for tuition or cost of attendance. We have our access funding, and that's for any student who's taking a graduate entrance or professional examination. Um, so if a student's taking a teaching exam, a nursing exam, um, the GRE to get into graduate school or anything like that, the access funding is an opportunity for you to apply for that to help um, offset the costs of that test or exam. Um, for students who do receive our BIE funding, we have professional exam funding as well as internship funding. And we also have a professional development opportunity for any students or educators in the STEM fields. Uh, for any students who would like to become a CPA, we have assistance to help pay for those exams. Um, we have a student relief scholarship that we open each fall, and what that is is um, to help students offset emergency costs. So it goes directly to the student, but it's for emergency situations. Uh, for any doctoral students out there, once you are um, in the final stage of your doctoral degree, we have some fellowships there to help um, offset those research costs. Um, and that's just a kind of quick, quick review of the other opportunities we do offer. But I'm going to go ahead and get into the scholarship information. Um, so some important dates to keep in mind is January 1st. Our application for the academic year opens January 1st every year. And the deadline is for the students is June 1st. So any student can be applying for our scholarships now as long as you get everything submitted by June 1st. And then there's a few other things that you need as an applicant. And those things are due by July 15th. And that would be your financial need form, your tribal eligibility certificate, and your references. Um, and I'll kind of go into more detail about the references here on this next slide. Um, these are just some things to have handy while you're applying for the Native Forward Scholarships to kind of speed the process up. Um, have a copy of your resume on hand, a photo of yourself, a copy of your most recent academic transcript, PDF preferred. The one thing to keep in mind when you submit the transcript is it does need to have your name, your institution's name or your school's name, and cumulative information. And the last thing is an email address for four, these four representatives, your tribal enrollment office, your financial aid office at your school, an academic reference, and a community reference. And the way our application works is you'll put the email address for each of these representatives, and the system will send them the form, and they fill it out, and it comes right back to your application. There's nothing for you to give them uh, physically. Just put your email their email address in. They receive the form and fill it out, and then we have access to their submission. Uh, the academic reference needs to be somebody who knows you very well academically, and then the community or leadership reference needs to be somebody who knows you well um, outside of school. It can, it can also be a professor, advisor, or something like that, but they're going to have to speak more on your community involvement and leadership. 
And then there's just a couple of um, long response questions that we do include with the applications. So the first one is the personal statement. This is where you'll really talk about who you are, where you're from, um, you know, feel free to mention your tribal affiliation, introduce yourself in your native language if you so choose, um, kind of talk about yourself here. What made you choose your career path or your educational path? Was there something um, in your life that made you, that impacted you, that made you want to go down that educational path that you're going down? Or is it something you just always wanted to do and had a passion for? Um, where you're going to school? And then be very clear in your message. And I def definitely recommend having someone proofread your response. And lastly, answer the whole question. A lot of these scholarship applications have uh, questions with multiple parts. So be sure you answer every question being asked in the prompt. Uh, for us, our pre personal statement must be no more than 750 words, but we definitely recommend to exceed 500 to really get up there and um, share as much about you as you can as the applicant. A couple short answers we have. Um, this is a chance for you to share your professional positions. It can be paid or unpaid employment and or internship opportunities. Anything you've done as far as research goes there. Um, and then also your community engagement and leadership roles. So for community engagement and leadership, um, I really recommend you sit down and really think about what you're involved in and what you do. Um, it can be any organizations or special projects you've been organizing, you lead, helped implement, or even participated in. You don't have to be the lead for it to be considered community engagement or leadership. Um, definitely think about tribal activities, roles, and responsibilities. These are great examples of community engagement and leadership. Um, also, family responsibilities. If you babysit your siblings or um, you know help watch your brothers or sisters while mom and dad are at work or while your guardians are working, um, family responsibilities can also be included as a form of community engagement or leadership. And then there's the more um, traditional roles, you know, Boys and Girls Club, research, any kind of food pantry you volunteer at, um, ACES, ABLE, Unity, National Society of Collegiate Scholars, anything that you are involved in as far as a club or organization goes as well. Lastly, um, there is what we call a bonus question. It's a more open-ended response. And I, I think the prompt actually says, is there anything else you would like to share that you did not have the chance to share in the previous questions? So really when you look at your native forward application and you um, take, a look, take a step back and look at everything you've responded with, um, is there anything that's not in there that you'd like to share to the reader, to the person who reads your application? You know, this is a chance to really make yourself unique as a candidate and make your application stand out. Um, it's really open-ended, like I said, you can address any obstacles or challenges you've overcome. You can go into more detail about your passion for your career path or educational path. Um, it's really just a chance for you to share anything you'd like. Um, these are just some additional resources, but most everyone on this slide is here presenting tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on from that. Um, some contact information to keep in mind. Um, there on the on the right side of the screen there, the phone number, as well as this email address, scholarships at nativeforward.org, if you have any questions at all along the way as you're applying for our scholarships. And um, our website, nativeforward.org, right there at the bottom of the screen, will get you to the application site. Uh, my direct email address is right there in the center of the screen, michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, at nativeforward.org. Um, I can help you with any application questions you may have or um, issues. And lastly, I want to share our social media here. Um, the best way to keep up to date with Native Forward, as well as any opportunities we post about Native students, um, is by following us on social media. Follow Facebook, uh, Native Forward Scholars Fund, Instagram, Native underscore Forward, or LinkedIn, Native Forward Scholars Fund. Um, our team really does as good as they can um, about posting any opportunities for Native students beyond just Native Forward. So um, I would definitely recommend following us on social media to, to always be in the know. Um, and with that, I will open it up and monitor the, the chat for the Q&A feature for any questions you all may have. And then um, I'll answer a few questions out loud and then uh, also respond to people via chat um, before I move on and pass it to the next presenter. Do you want to answer a couple? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see, it looks like this one, maybe I'm going to start here. Uh, what if I'm applying for an advanced standing graduate program and it starts in the summer? Will I be eligible for a scholarship? 
So in that situation, um, you would not be eligible for summer funding. You'd be eligible to start begin receiving funding if you receive a Native Forward Scholarship. You'd be eligible to begin receiving awards in the fall term. Um, we don't have any summer start scholarships for students. Okay, then the resume, is that a job resume or a scholarship resume? Um, it's a little bit of both. So um, there is a short answer question that kind of asks you for your employment and or internship involvement. And that's where you'll kind of list any jobs you have held, any internships you've been involved in, uh, paid and unpaid. And then also a scholarship resume, you know, that's where you'll really list out your um, community service, your leadership roles and responsibilities and any organizations you've been involved in as a, a student. So it's kind of a little bit of both a job resume and scholarship resume. All right, thank you. There's also a few more here. I think we have just a little bit of time for you on these. Okay. Is the photo necessary to complete the application? I don't have a professional headshot. Oh, where did it go? I don't have a professional headshot yet, but if selected, that would definitely be a priority to get to you. Yeah, so um, the photo is necessary to complete the application, but we totally understand that. So what I would recommend there is just uploading the um, just the best photo you have at the time. And then if you are selected as a recipient, you could then you'll have the chance in the post acceptance form to upload an updated photo. All right. For Native Forward, I have gotten emails that say that I'm a scholar, but have not received any money this year. Is there a way I can check if I get a scholarship for Native Forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, whoever that is, shoot me an email, michael at nativeforward.org, or give me a call sometime tomorrow at um, the phone number for Native Forward, and, and they'll transfer you over. Just ask for Michael, and they can transfer you over to me, and I can definitely um, get you situated with that. All right, this might be another email one, but I'll go ahead and say it here. When using the scholarship finder tool, the direct scholarships are still showing the winter spring 2023 application and are closed. Do you know when this will be updated? Or is there another way to find the 23, 24 application? Yeah, so with the scholarship finder, um, you should be able to, to see all the 23, 24 opportunities when you look in there. Um, I was on there earlier today and was able to do it. But um, if you're having any issues navigating our website, again, just reach out to me via email. And uh, I can give you a call, give me a call, whatever. We can get on a Zoom a Zoom meeting and I can I can walk you through one-on-one uh, -on -one through the process. Happy to help. All right, how about one more? Sure. Um, okay, last one, at Native Forward. Most of your scholarships indicated that they are need-based. Can you speak on how that is determined? Yeah, absolutely. So um, most of our scholarships, as you mentioned, are need-based. We do have a few merit-based, but most are need-based. The way we determine that is when you apply for our scholarships, you put an email address for your financial aid office. The system sends them a finding, what we call a financial needs form, and they fill that out with your information. So your financial aid office does need access to your FAFSA for the academic year, and they then provide that information to Native Forward. And the way we typically determine need based is we take uh, cost of attendance and we, which is again reported by the financial aid office, and we subtract out the um, financial aid information that's reported by the financial aid office. You know, if you're already receiving some tribal scholarships or private scholarships or anything like that. And then the difference is the need. And so um, every student is different. Even students at the same school have different needs. So there's really no way to say, whether or not you have a need without really digging in and looking at an individual um, situation. Again, if you have any questions about whether or not you do have need, definitely reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Um, but but everyone's situation is a little different. Thanks, Michael. And there's a few more in there. When you okay, get I'll just take that last here. one that just popped up real quick. Um, is they ask, will my references and financial verification in my personal profile carry over? to my other applications? Yes. So when a student for Native Forward applications, when a student fills out what we call the Native Forward personal profile, that's what we call a common application. And so everything you input into the personal profile duplicates into your um, application. So say you're applying for three of our scholarships. Once you complete the personal profile and then you click into one of those three scholarship applications, you only then have to fill out the essay questions for each scholarship. Everything else will automatically be completed from your personal profile. So you don't have to type everything in more than once. And with that, I will, um, I'll continue to monitor the, the Q&A here and answer questions, but I will pass it on to um, 
Gabriel Bell with the Indigenous Education Inc. Cobell Scholarship. All right, thank you, Michael. And while I'm here, I was just kind of helping out. What we're doing is as we're presenting, our colleagues are looking at the questions that you all are posing and we'll either type in the answer or try and answer it live. Um, but before I get to mine, I'll just uh, answer one from Tajane Porter. For the Cobell Scholarship Summer, I, have, I haven't gotten enrolled yet. However, it wants my class schedule and I won't get that until after the, the deadline for the scholarship. Um, so Tajane, that's absolutely fine. Um, we understand that situation. So um, if you would just put a note in your application somewhere that saying stating that you're you're waiting for that, you can send us an email at scholarships at cobaltscholar.org as well. Um, but we do understand that circumstance, so don't worry about it. Once you do get your um, class schedule for the summer, just upload it and you'll be good to go. All right. Well, I want to thank my colleagues from the different organizations that are on tonight. We have quite a bit of attendees, over 100 so far, and I know there's probably more than that um, out there. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. But let me go ahead and get into my um, presentation and we'll, we'll get right in there. So let me know if you all can see that. Yeah, we can see it, Gabe. All right. Well, my name is Gabriel Bell. I'm with the uh, Indigenous Education Incorporated, which uh, administers the Cobell Scholarship. So at the very bottom of this front slide, you see cobellscholar.org. I want to encourage everybody that's uh, listening um, to really jot down these websites that, that we're all sharing with you tonight. This is really where you can start some of the questions or answers to some of your questions um, if we can't get them tonight. So um, we have uh, the College Fund, collegefund.org. We have nativeforward.org. Um, cobaltscholar.org and also aces.org who will be sharing here in just a minute. Uh, but just a little quote there in the front, uh, front slide here. I want these young people to understand the way the world works and to question everything that comes before them. And this is a quote by Eloise Cobell, um, whom this scholarship is named after, the Cobell Scholar Scholarship. Um, Eloise um, was a member of the Blackfeet Nation. This picture is actually a photo of the, the, the Blackfeet Mountains or the mountains near Blackfeet Reservation in Montana. And so we just want to open up with that quote. And if you might just reflect a little bit about that, um, it's good to think about what we're doing and to question everything that we encounter. Um, this is kind of the place where uh, Eloise Cobell operated from. And it's really kind of what started some of the uh, endeavors that she partook in. So just a little bit about that. And again, Eloise Cobell. Again, Gabriel Bell, uh, Director of Outreach. I am a member of the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribe on Oklahoma. Um, I'm also born in Guam, so I'm Chamorro as well. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma from eighth grade through college. I received a degree in mathematics at Oklahoma Baptist University, for those of you familiar. Um, that's kind of a little bit about myself. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at gabriel.bell at cobellscholar.org. I'm happy to answer any questions that you all have. I also have a phone number there if you want to reach me. Um, but as we're, I'm going through these slides, um, I'm going to try not to talk too fast, but um, please pose any of your questions in the Q&A. And you can just put just put Cobell on the question just so I know um, how to answer that. Or if we get some live questions, we'll know that those are directed uh, for me today. So I just want to thank you all for joining us. And please share, share this information with your family, friends. Um, let them know that there's scholarships out there, and all you got to do is get it there, check it out, Google it, go to our website, web links, it's all there. Um, with this land acknowledgement, we're just going to take just a brief moment to think about um, the lands where you're, you're at, where you're residing. The Indigenous Education Incorporated offices are located in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is home of the Isleta and Sandia Pueblos. The IEI mission. We really try as a and your Cobell Scholarship staff to um, reach out to you and provide you opportunities and elevate your experience as you're going through your educational journey. A little bit about what the IEI mission is all about. Again, Eloise Yellowbird Woman Pepion Cobell is the reason for our existence with the Cobell Scholarship. Um, she led a 15-year legal battle a class action suit known as Cobell versus Salazar, which uh, resulted in a $3.4 billion settlement, the largest of its kind by the US government. 
and it was from her steadfast leadership in this class action suit and certainly sacrificing that she made over the years uh, fighting this case and in her leadership and her persistence ended in this, uh, this opportunity. Picture to the right is President Obama congratulating her. Uh, not too long after she had passed away, um, Eloise Cobell was also awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. But this is a little bit, a little bit about Eloise Cobell. So getting into some of the scholarship um, requirements, here's some eligibility that you might look over. Um, I want to let you know that, as with many of the other uh, scholarship organizations tonight, I will let you know that the Cobell Scholarship is a highly competitive scholarship. So when you go to cobellscholar.org and you get in there and you check out the application itself, um, you'll see that it's it's lengthy. So we want to encourage you uh, to make sure that you use all the time that you can to provide the best application um, in the system that you possibly can. And don't wait till the last minute. The deadline is, this year is the same as every year. It's March 31st, so it's right around the corner. We're in the month of March. So you can go to cobellscholar.org and start checking it out. But that first eligibility bar there is talking about being a high achieving, engaged American Indian or Alaska Native, uh, that you have the ability to express your leadership experience and community service experience um, to display your potential for success. And once you get into the application, for the Cobell Scholarship, whether you're a, a senior in high school that's looking to uh, get into college next academic year, or if you're a current uh, college student, or if you're getting into grad school, um, you'll see in the questions that are asked in the application um, how we can glean some of that uh, information. So and it's going to be respective to your education level. If you're in high school, um, those opportunities will be specific to your, your grade level, your age level. Um, so really do a great job to answer those questions in there. And they, they oftentimes will tie back to some articles about Eloise Cobell. So um, again, I encourage you to check it out. You must be an enrolled member of the U.S. federally recognized tribe in the country. Be a degree seeking full time student at a nonprofit post-secondary institution. So again, if you're a, a high school senior, um, you're looking at getting to college, this, this is a requirement you want to consider when you're looking at next academic year. Sometimes programs you might get into are not necessarily degree seeking. Um, some of the institutions, colleges, universities that you're looking at might be for profit. So make sure you look at that. For the Cobell Scholarship, you must be degree seeking at a nonprofit post secondary institution. Um, as with the other, another uh, scholarship that was mentioned tonight, uh, the Cobell Scholarship is not renewable, so you can apply every year. I will say if you're applying again or a returning uh, scholar that the, the questions may be just a little bit different. The application process may be just a little bit shorter, um, but the same still exists that you must uh, submit it on time um, well in advance of the uh, March 31st deadline. The selection process will take place after the deadline is passed. And we will provide funding uh, in a merit-based slash unmet need uh, basis. And here's kind of the, probably the most important information that you might be looking for. So I'm gonna go through it one by one. Um, the Cobell Scholarship does provide funding for vocational uh, certificates, vocational programs. So if that's something that you're looking at, or if you have family or friends that are getting to a vocational trade, let them know that they can apply. Um, you can apply for the vocational scholarship year round. Should you apply and get accepted, you'll receive, you can receive up to $5,000. And we do incentivize returning scholars that apply again. You can get uh, $6,000 and uh, that can go up. For vocational, for the vocational scholarship opportunity, we do offer funding during the summer as well, $2,500. And for the undergraduate and graduate scholarship, the next two bars, the deadline, uh, both are March 31st. Uh, with the undergraduate scholarship, if you're getting into your bachelor's degree or your associate's program, um, you can receive up to $5,000. And again, um, as with vocational, if you're returning and you should receive it a second year, you could, you could receive up to $6,000. At the graduate level, the Cobalt Scholarship covers up to $12,500 per academic year. Um, and as Michael said in his presentation, all these scholarships are looking at um, a financial needs analysis that we will do on your behalf, um, but that's what we come up with the award. 
and you can receive up to the this, these maximum amounts that can be offered. COBOL does also offer a graduate summer research fellowship. For those of you that are in your master's program or PhD and are looking to fund your research during the summer, we offer up to $5,000 um, to about five students per year. Um, this opportunity goes from September 1 and the application closes January 10th. So this academic year is already done. But if you're looking at that in the future, um, consider that with cobaltscholar.org and apply for the Graduate Summer Research Fellowship. The last two bars at the bottom um, talk about the undergraduate and graduate summer application opportunities. So um, you can receive up to $2,500 for the summer term. I know this is something that a lot of students look at and um, sometimes need funding for the summer. Sometimes they need that summer term to graduate um, and $2,500 is available should you decide to apply again at cobaltscholar.org. This application runs from February 15th to May 4th. So this is actually still open currently. And just a little bit about the process. Um, the Cobalt Scholarship works in what we call OASIS, the Online Application and Scholarship Information System. And with just a couple minutes that I have left, or one or two, I just wanna share with you all, um, once you get into the OASIS platform, the Online Application and Scholarship Information System, um, you'll just go through a really straightforward process. These bullet points here, you're gonna start with creating a profile, which just gathers your basic demographic information. You will complete an eligibility form, which is a one-page online form, which will allow the OASIS uh, system to match you to available opportunities based on that information. And then once you get access to those opportunity-specific applications, you can always go back into OASIS, log in, and then access whatever opportunity you've been matched with and start the application there. Again, it's, it's in March now, so the undergraduate and graduate opportunities will have a deadline on March 31st. We uh, highly encourage you to go on there and start that process now. And that's what I wanted to mention so far on this slide, and I'll um, actually um, conclude here in just a second so we can have some maybe a couple minutes for questions. Uh, but the last few things are in this process, we do um, request the following items, transcripts and course enrollment. However, the COBOL scholarship team will follow your institution for their financial needs analysis as well as a tribal enrollment verification from your respective tribe. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude my portion and uh, see if there's any, any questions out there. Okay, I'm gonna go backwards here. At Cobalt Summer Research, when will the award slash denial information be given to applicants for this upcoming summer? Um, so they're currently still in the uh, process for, uh, you know, reviewing and selecting. So I'm just going to give you a general timeline closer to the closer to the uh, April timeframe. Um, this may not be a hard uh, time frame for you, but I do want to let you know that, yeah, um, they're still early in the process. So closer to April. And I know it's really close to the summer. Um, some of you might be looking for an answer um, as to when you'll be notified. So what I will do is I'll just give you that general time frame, but encourage you to follow up with uh, with your contacts in that part of the system to follow up on, on the research fellowship. Let's see. This may be a question for me. Uh, how many scholarships are given out for graduate students each year? So that's actually a moving target. There's not a set uh, number. It's really based on funding amounts that the Co Cobalt Scholar, uh, Scholarship has at that time. Um, so I really can't answer that question specifically. Cobell, does professional degree seeking students fall under the graduate application? Um, yes, they actually do. So if you're a professional, if you already have your bachelor's degree, then that's gonna push you up into the graduate level application. And when you complete the eligibility form, that should actually um, get sorted out that way. Um, you'll, let you, you'll let the uh, input rather that you're a, uh, a person with your undergrad, actually your undergraduate degree, bachelor's degree, and then that, that way, uh, if you're you know in medical school or pursuing law school, it'll, it'll match you correctly that way. But I hope that does answer your question. It will be graduate level. 
And I'm going to do one more question, and then I will pass it on to our colleagues here at ASUS. So one more question would be, uh, let's see, does it, okay. Is Cobell open all, to all students, or do you have to attend a Native college? Yes, um, Co the Co Cobell Scholarship is open to all students. You don't have to be attending a Native college. You can attend any nonprofit secondary, post-secondary institution, um, as long as it's a nonprofit. And, um, and yeah, so that answers that. What I want to do is I want to thank all of you all for attending tonight. I'm going to go in and try and answer um, some of the questions you have. But with that, I will turn it over to Taylor and Monique with ACES. Thank you all so much. Taylor Kingsbury. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Kingsbury. I am the program officer for ACES, um, and you will see Monique on the screen as well. She is our program manager, and she'll actually be monitoring the questions um, so we can kind of keep this going and answering our ACES-specific questions. So I will share my screen now. Okay. So like I said, uh, my name is Taylor Kingsbury. I am here to represent ACES, which is the American Indian Science and Engineering Society and talk about our scholarship opportunities. So a little bit about ACES. Um, we are an organization that works to advance indigenous people in STEM, where historically indigenous people have been underrepresented and unaccounted for in the world of STEM. Um, we're looking to, uh, to help people in those fields. Um, and Monique and myself work specifically with students to, in the STEM fields um, to raise up that next generation um, of Indigenous people in STEM. We give out nearly $12 million in, in um, academic scholarships, but we also offer a lot more at ACES. We have internships, there's professional development, um, different career resources. We have tons of conferences this year. We had we just finished our Canadian conference. Um, we have summits and we have a lot of PK through 12 programming as well. So our team specifically that works with scholarships, our director is Dr. Johnny Pula. He's traveling right now, so he's not here. Um, and then there's me, I'm the program officer and then Monique and our emails are right there. You can also find us on the staff page at aces.org. So to get into our scholarships that we have, um, ACES works with a lot of funders um, each year to uh, facilitate scholarships. So this year we have um, a number of new ones as well as our returning Old Faithful. Um, A.T. Anderson is our biggest scholarship opportunity because it encompasses all STEM, um, all STEM fields. Um, so A.T. Anderson was started as Memorial Fund for this one of the founding board members of ACES. Um, a lot of small opportunities, small funding opportunities go into that one scholarship. And we actually facilitate that in-house, whereas our other scholarships are facilitated by our funders. Um, so for A.T. Anderson, it's our broadest. Um, we're able to give out a lot of um, scholarships to really unique STEM fields that might not be covered underneath other scholarship opportunities. Um, so A.T. Anderson, if you log on to OASIS, if you get matched with scholarships, you'll probably get matched to A.T. Anderson. And if you didn't, you should reach out to us because we probably, you probably should have been matched to it. Uh, we have Aristocrats. Um, the Apple Pathways Academy is new this year. Last year, it was just the Apple Scholarship. Um, and this year, it's the Pathways Academy. So when you log on to OASIS, which we'll talk about, and you get matched with Apple, um, the application actually isn't on OASIS. You'll get a link to click on and it's going to take you to another platform. And this platform is where you're going to apply. Apple's doing all of the administrating for this um, new academy um, because it's not just a uh, financial scholarship. There's also mentoring opportunities, travel opportunities, a lot of like career coaching. Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. But just so you know, when you're going through that application process, you're going to be go working with Apple directly, not ACES. But it's a great opportunity. It's a um, very substantial scholarship. So if you're interested in it, definitely check it out. And there's information on our website about it as well. 
We have 3M, that's for incoming freshmen only, um, ARDC, BNSF, which is renewable each year, BNSF models a cohort. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. We have Chevron, ESA, ExxonMobil, which is only for research funding. So if you're doing summer research, that's all it funds. It isn't an academic scholarship. It's just for research. Um, GeoComply, Intel, we have Native Next Gen, which is our freshman only um, Intel scholarship, Growing the Legacy Undergrad, and then Growing the Legacy Graduate. And then we have SIA, which is a Washington State only scholarship, and it is for aerospace engineering students. So the ACES timeline um, is, it's, we extended it a couple years ago, but it's been the same ever since. So our applications are open now. January 31st, they open, um, and they're going to close on May 31st. We then give all of our applicants one extra week to get their letters of recommendation um, submitted. Um, and then our review process starts immediately on June 1st. So if you have your letters of recommendation already in by June 7th, we've already started reviewing your um, application. We do that periodically. We actually just reviewed them today. And so if we have any questions about anything that you've given us, um, you know, a file won't open or it doesn't show that you're full time, we're going to reach out to you and ask you those questions. So don't think you're just gonna get denied automatically. Um, if we have questions about your application um, between now and June 7th, we'll be reaching out to you. Um, we review our scholarships internally and make sure that you, everything you've given us matches our eligibility. And then all applications are moved on to be reviewed by a panel of um, professional ACES volunteers. So these are people who are at MIT, NASA, um, really amazing STEM professionals are reading over these applications and scoring them. And then once they're all scored, the top scored applications are sent to the funders of the scholarship that you applied for. And then they make the final decision on who is going to be funded under their scholarship. And then we do all of our award notifications and payments from August all the way to November. Um, kind of depending on when um, the post acceptance documents are submitted. So a little bit about the specifics of ACES scholarships. Our eligibility, you do have to be full time at an accredited co uh, college or university. Um, that can be a two year or four year, but it must be accredited and you must be full time. So an undergrad full time, a graduate full time, PhD program full time. And if you ever have any questions about that, you can always, always reach out to me or Monique, and we're happy to advise you on if you are full-time or what that looks like. Um, STEM field of study. So the unique, unique thing about ACES is we are STEM focused. Um, a lot of people will kind of ask questions about like whether this is STEM or do you consider psychology STEM. Um, we go by the Department of Interior that, or another Department of Education actually has um, a list of STEM uh, recognized fields, and that is what we go by. So if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions about your field of study if it is considered STEM. A lot of our funders set the field of study they want for their scholarship based on kind of what their business is. So um, if we're looking at like Intel, you're going to see a lot of um, computer engineering is going to be matched with Intel, or they have some neuroscience that's going to be matched with Intel. Um, you, if you're a psychology major or if you're um, a blacksmithing major, stuff like that, you will be matched with Intel. And that is set by Intel themselves. They have certain fields of study they want matched. And all of that's on our website as well. If you go to aces.org, you go to four students and scholarships, each scholarship has its own page its own eligibility criteria, and you can read all about that there. You have to be a member of ACES. It's free for students. It's a really great resource. If you are a STEM major, if your goal in life is to be a scientist or something in STEM, sign up to be an ACES member. You're going to get so many more opportunities besides just scholarships. You're going to get internship notifications, like different webinars. There's um, chapters at colleges that have meetups. It's a really great way to get connected to other Indigenous people in STEM. Your GPA, we do ask for a 3.0. Um, that's what we consider good academic standing. 
Now, if you have a 2.0 um, and you've really been working to get that up, we totally understand, and a lot of our funders understand that um, people have bad semesters or sometimes um, classes don't go the way they want or you had to drop out one semester. Um, we totally understand that. So if you do have a lower than 3.0 GPA, even though we have that on our website, apply. Apply for ACEs, apply for our scholarships. Um, it's not something that we're gonna turn away your application for. Um, and we ultimately let the funders decide that. A lot of them do not, they really don't go under 2.0. They don't, we don't award really under 2.0, but if you have like a 2.5, um, it's a really good chance that you will still be considered for a scholarship. Tribal citizenship or descendancy. We do ask that you show us identification for tribal citizenship, or if you are a descendant that isn't enrolled, but you're a descendant of an enrolled member, you can use things like um, birth certificates. You can use, um, and like that's, well, birth certificates is a really good one to use. And then to show your relation to someone who was enrolled. Um, just so you know, we do not take things like 23andMe or any kind of DNA matching um, that shows that you are such a percentage of Native American. Like we don't take that. You have to show direct descendancy or um, your tribal citizenship. Uh, Non-renewable. So every year you have to apply for ACE scholarships. There's only two that work as a renewed scholarship. And that's BNSF and um, SPIA, and when you get awarded those, we go over that process with you, but all the other ones are not automatically renewed for the next year, so you do need to reapply. Oops, I want to go back. There we go. Application. So our application, um, we actually partner with Cobell. We are on OASIS as well, and when you set it for Cobell Scholarships um, and you get matched, you're going to be probably matched with ACES if you are a STEM major. So um, once you go through your application profile and you get matched, um, our applications, there are, there is an application for every scholarship. So if you want to apply for Intel and you also get matched for 3M, you do have to apply for each one individually. It isn't that you get matched, you do one application and it, it multiplies to all of them. You have to do one for one. And that's because our funders set the questions on each application. A lot of them are pretty much the same variation um, of the same question, but they are specific um, enough to where you will need to do an application for each one. Um, we ask for a resume on each one, a transcript to be uploaded to each um, application, essay questions that I just went over, and two letters of recommendation. We ask that you get two letters of recommendation for every application. Now, those letters of recommendation can be used on every scholarship that you apply for, but they do have to be submitted to that scholarship. Um, so if you ask for a reference and you say, you know, I am going to apply for these four scholarships, they should expect to, to get sent four different emails from OASIS, from us, um, with a portal to have those letters uploaded to. Um, and they can use the same letter for each portal because they're gonna be reviewed by different people, but um, they do have to be uploaded to every application that you apply for. Um, like I said, each scholarship has its own application. And then the applications once completed are reviewed and scored by a group of volunteers. Our selection and payment process, Funders select the scholarship recipients, which I went into. Payments are sent directly to students. So our scholarships are not sent to your schools. Again, there are two scholarships that is the um, that are the exceptions. That's BNSF and SPIA. Again, with they have a different model, um, but all the rest of them are going to go directly to the student. You can use those for whatever. We understand that books cost, um, gas to go to school phone bill, food, to, you know, to, to fill your brain, to study. These things are important. And so you can use your funds however you want, um, but, and they go directly to you. And they are split between two payments. So if you get a $2,000 scholarship, you're going to get $1,000 in the fall. And then in the spring, you will send us your grades for the fall and your new class schedule for the spring. And then you will get your other $1,000. Um, so tips and tricks for applying for ACEs scholarships. The first is start your applications early. These aren't necessarily lengthy applications, but we do want you to take the time to really think about your answers, especially on your essay questions. 
take the time to really dig into getting your, uh, your letters of recommendation. Get your requests in early. Pound your references. Make sure they know what's coming. Make sure they get those submitted. Um, and speaking of essays, one of the key points of our applications are the essays. We put the majority of weight, I think it's like 65% of your weighted score of your application is going to be on your essay answers alone. So write your essay questions in a Word document. Because again, you will have to put them on every application, but they're varied enough to where you can just kind of tweak it sometimes. Um, so switch Intel for BMM or, um, you know, which it, just like little things like that to make it applicable to all of your essay or all of your applications. But write it in a Word document, have someone read it over. You know, you are gonna read it so much, you're not gonna see those little mistakes. Someone else is gonna see um, where that grammar is a little bit off, or maybe you could talk a little bit more about this. Um, it's gonna be really important to your score to have these essay questions like really ironed out. So do that early really think about the questions. Um, and again, recruit early for letters of recommendation. Again, we you have to have letters of recommendation to be uh, considered a complete application. So make sure you get those in early, make sure you talk to your references, they know what's coming. In your essay questions, talk about your academic career. Yes, we, you know, that's important. You're applying because you want to be in, in your academic career right now. But also talk about your personal life. Talk about, say you, you want to go into hydrology. Like you want to study water. You want to study how uh, water, how a well, like how you can build a well, maybe off of like solar energy. Talk about how that is going to be something that you want to use to better people in the future. Like, what do you want to do with that? Do you want to give back to your community? Is there a certain uh, community that you want to give back to? It necessarily isn't yours, but maybe someone that, or a community that you know needs this really talk about your end goal. Um, and of course, we always like to see how that's going to be furthering indigenous people, how you're looking after your community um, or looking after uh, different people. Um, so do that. So don't just say like, I like school and I like golf and be done with your essay question. I promise you, you will not get a good grade and you probably most likely will not be offered a scholarship. Really dig into why you want this um, with uh, degree and really what you want to do with it. Um, explain your discrepancies. Like I said, lower GPA, um, taking a gap year, stuff like this that we are going to notice on your transcript and the reviewers are going to notice on your transcript. Um, tell us about it. Obviously, you do not have to give us any information that you don't want to that you're not comfortable with. But if you had a low GPA and you're like, I had a professor, it was really hard, I really tried, but it's not getting to it, let us know that. Let us know that and, and also tell us like what you're doing to kind of uh, to build back up your GPA. Like how, how did that change you? What did you learn from that? Um, just kind of explain those things. Don't be ashamed of them. Um, this happens to everyone, but explain that in your essays. Um, again, sign up to be an ACES member and come to ACES webinars. We, if you don't have to be an ACES member, you're going to get emails from us a lot between now and the end of May. We're gonna have a number of webinars You'll get to meet STEM professionals, ask questions about their academic career. Um, you will get to ask us questions about like, how do I write an essay? Or like, what do I need for a letter of recommendation? Who do I ask for that? Uh, what's the most important thing about college? Um, we are here to help equip you for not only getting ACES scholarships, but getting a Native Forward scholarship or getting a Cobell scholarship. You know, we all are here together because we want you to be funded in your academic career. We all believe in you. So we want you to believe in yourself, apply for that scholarship, even though you have a 2.0, um, or you, you know, you're a returning student, you've been out of school for 10 years, and um, you just don't know if someone would want to fund you, like apply for that scholarship. You will never know unless you apply. So that's it for me. Um, let me see if you have any questions and I will stop sharing my screen. Hey Taylor. Yeah, we have two specific questions and wonder if you can touch more about it. Yes. Uh, the first one is, do I qualify for freshman scholarships because I will have an associate's degree when I graduate high school? If you're going to be classified at your university in the fall as a freshman, 
then yes, you can apply for freshman only scholarships, but your classification must be a freshman. So if you have um, enough credits to be considered a sophomore in college and you go apply or you get um, accepted into your next university or college and you're going to be a sophomore, you cannot. But if you're still qualified, um, still classified as a freshman, then yes, you can apply. Awesome. Thanks. And then another one is as a political science PhD student using data science, machine learning, et cetera, am I eligible to join ACES? Yes, definitely. Definitely join ACES. We actually just had um, a, we, we had someone come and talk about data science. Oh, she works now for IBM. She came and talked about data science and how she was an Intel graduate scholar and um, now is working as a data scientist at um, IBM. So definitely do that. Um, and, you know, even we have a lot of members at ACES who are not STEM uh, related. I do not have a STEM background. I have a law background. Um, and, but I still benefit a lot from the information ACES has. There's a lot, if you're like science curious, you know, I consider myself a science uh, enthusiast. And so I love hearing about these talks. So if you're interested in it, definitely look into it um, and definitely um, apply to be a member. I mean, it's free, so why not? And I'm going to put in the chat, I know there's some questions about STEM majors. So let me do this to everyone. This is the website we use to identify our STEM majors. Um, so if you're if you have a question about what is the STEM major for our scholarship, click on that link, do a quick find. Um, and if you don't see it, you can still reach out to me and Monique. We're happy to talk you through it. Um, but again, a lot of our scholarships, the qualifications are set by the funder. So even if you are a music major and you're using a lot of like computer science in your field, that doesn't mean you get to apply for a computer science degree. Um, it was cutting out at the beginning. Can you repeat where you're asking that? Oh, yes. So A.T. Anderson is our largest STEM scholarship, our largest scholarship um, out of any of them that we have. So click on that link that I sent and that every um, major on that list qualifies for A.T. Anderson. Um, it is a memorial scholarship dedicated to the one of the founding board members of ACES. Um, we do all of the vetting and everything for that one in-house. Um, and so we offer it to any STEM major and it's for undergraduates and graduates. Okay, any other questions for me right now? Uh, one general one, Caleb Taylor, is, yeah. is a GPA requirement. Right. So for GPA, we say that on all of our um, website, you'll see 3.0 as the requirement. So that's what we consider a good academic standing. But if you have a 2.0 or higher, apply, definitely apply. Um, and again, on your application, take the time to kind of explain if there is a semester where you did really bad, like maybe say like, I did do bad this semester, but I've been working, you know, doing certain things, changed my study habits. What did you learn from that period? Definitely um, always apply because you never know if you'll get it unless you apply. Um, but definitely explain when there are those like lower GPAs, um, what you learned from that and how you're working to improve your GPA. And again, it's also up to the funder. They Some funders are really in on the GPA and some of them are not um, they don't think that's as important. And at ACES, we're kind of, we don't think it's as important as well. And so for AT Anderson, we do accept under um, a 3.0, but we do kind of expect you to let us know why you're there. Obviously, you don't have to give us anything. You don't have to like tell us any like really sad details or anything that you don't want to divulge to us, but we do kind of want to know um, that you acknowledge that and you're working towards um, raising your GPA. Um, all of our scholarships are full-time. All of our scholarships, we don't have any that are for part-time. You have to be full-time. Um, and if you're in any kind of like research um, program or anything like that, you can let us know and we can look over that with you um, if you're not like doing like traditional hours. Um, but all of our scholarships are full-time. Uh, do you have to have your tribal role number to be a member? No, you don't. You don't have to be, you don't have to um, 
have your tribal descendancy or um, citizenship card to enroll as an ACES member. Oh yeah, Monique, will you just uh, will you put the just in general scholarship webpage up on the chat, and then people can go to that just the aces.org scholarship page, and then yes. um, anyone has any questions about that, um, all of the scholarships have their own webpage, and that will probably be it for Monique and myself. Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We'll take um, a few moments to um, have a few more questions in the chat now that it's uh, it's enabled, or you can use the the Q and A um, uh, the Q and A as well. And if you could um, just uh, add which um, organization you're asking the question to, or if it's just a general question, we'll all try to answer the question the best of our ability. But um, yeah, we have a few more minutes, so if anyone else has any more questions, just uh, just put them in the chat or the Q&A section. Hey, Ben, there was one in here I was going to uh, just post to you real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the one question was, will we be able to get a copy of the PowerPoint? It has some really good information and website to guide us. So is that accessible? Yes, um, definitely for uh, the PowerPoint. Um, and um, everyone can send over uh, their PowerPoints to me, and I can send an overall email to everyone who's um, attended here tonight, um, as, as well as the recording, um, so everyone can view all of those. Thanks. Thanks. Y I saw a question pop up. I was going to answer if anybody wants to chime in too. Um, the question is, does being an online student hinder my chances of a scholarship? Uh, for Native Forward, as long as you're enrolled full-time and degree-seeking at a U.S. accredited institution, it doesn't matter if you're online, if you're in-person, if you're hybrid. Again, as long as you're full-time degree-seeking at a U.S. accredited institution, your chances are the same as anyone else. Good question. For uh, Cobell to be the same, as long as you're degree-seeking at a Nonprofit post secondary institution, you're good to go. Uh, we fund online programs. Pass it on to Taylor. Monique? Yep, we also fund online programs as long as you're full time at an accredited uh, college or university, you can apply for an ACES scholarship. Yeah, and as well at the college fund, as long as you're full time, um, full time enrolled at a non um, nonprofit uh, accredited institution. There are a lot of good questions in here. I'm just kind of going through. I saw one for ACES about anthropology. We do consider anthropology a STEM field, um, but we don't have a lot of opportunity outside of this AP Anderson for anthropology. So you'll probably only get connected with one scholarship. Um, but we do have an internship that likes anthropology as a field of study. So if you're interested in an internship, um, BPA has an anthropology specific and um, archaeology specific internship. So if you go on OASIS, you'll probably get matched to BPA um, as well as AP Anderson. I'm going to jump in. I saw another one specific to Native Forward, but I'm sure anyone else could answer specific to their organization. Uh, the question is do you need to be a tribal member? or descendant. Uh, for Native Forward, we have, again, over 40 opportunities. Some are specific to enrolled members of tribes. Some are open to um, federally recognized tribal members or state recognized tribal members. And some are open to descendants of enrolled members of tribes. So um, we do fund tribal members as well as descendants, depending on the opportunity being applied for. And then I see one here for Cobell. For Cobell. Um, Crystal Gomez at Cobell, if we applied previously but were not awarded, is someone available to go over our previous 
is someone available to go over our previous application? Um, and that answer is no, um, we can't actually go in and access that to that degree. Um, so you can, and you can always go back in and look at your questions and improve on those, uh, the answers to the questions that you provided and improve your uh, application that way. Um, so that answers that question. Thank you. I see another one asking about um, medical professionals for Native Forward. So um, we do have opportunities for any field of study. Um, so a lot of our opportunities don't specifically say it's for law school or med school. It just says it's open to any field of study. So keep that in mind um, when you're doing that scholarship matching. It doesn't necessarily have to say law school, medical school, um, pharmacy school. If it, if it says it funds any field of study, you can definitely apply for that as long as it's for the correct um, educational level, undergraduate versus graduate or professional. So we do have opportunities for med school, law school, any field of study. I saw one to Taylor about her contact, but if all the organizations want to just add their um, any links or uh, their contacts in the, in the chat once more for everyone, since the chat's working now. I do also want to mention for folks that um, I know that um, for other organizations that have some really nifty research videos, there are some Cobell Scholarship application research videos also available at uh, cobellscholar.org. So I just wanted to mention that to you all. It will take you through the whole application process step by step. So I encourage you to check that out. Because as a matter of fact, if you go to cobellscholar.org, um, there are two buttons right on the front screen, and one of them is the research videos. Um, so check it out. I see a question here about um, a student who's not need-based. Um, for most of Native 40, would need to be need-based, but I know some of the other organizations have merit-based. If anyone wants to chime in on that one. Um, I will say for Cobell, they are, uh, we have merit-based, our scholarship is a merit-based scholarship. Um, we do base it, however, on your eligibility for federal aid. Um, so um, I do encourage you, once you get that, to that point in the application process, um, just to ensure that you're in conversation with your financial aid office, that you've, of course, completed your FAFSA for the academic year, and that's already done and sent to your institution. Um, that way, when we do to get, get to that, that part of the process, that it is seamless. So that's what I'll say. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I'll go off of um, Gabriel for uh, the college fund. Um, it's off of um, grades as well and merit-based for uh, the college fund. And it's uh, specific to um, kind of how your school will do the financial aid. Um, and so definitely be in talks with your um, you know, financial aid department at your school uh, once you've applied and, and if you've been awarded. And for ACES, we're also merit-based um, grade point average and um, being full-time. Uh, our scholarships, like I said, go directly to the student, and so you don't have to prove any um, of your ex like your qualification for federal funding or anything like that. Um, it's based solely off of your GPA and your um, your scored application, which gets chosen by the funder. I see one about um, 
Do all the organizations follow up with previous scholars or encouraged to reapply after completion of degrees? So for uh, the college fund, we, we definitely try to um, fund students throughout their college careers, um, especially if they're going into um, you know, graduate uh, programs as well, since we have uh, graduate scholarships. Um, so yes, uh, definitely apply um, every single year and apply to all of uh, the organizations and their opportunities um, here. And what was the question again, Ben? I'm sorry. It was, um, where did it go? Yeah, kind of disappear. It did, it, I think it oh, did disappear. Sorry, <laughs> I put answered on there. Um, it asked oh. us, do, do all of these organizations follow up with previous scholars or encouraged to reapply after completion of degree? For, I'll, I'll answer real quick. Thanks, Monique and uh, Ben. Um, for the Cobell Scholarship, we we are in contact with Cobell scholars all the time, and um, you know we get the question a lot. But we do reach out to current scholars and say, "Hey, look, next year the application is going to be coming up." So we encourage uh, our current scholars and past scholars to apply. Um, we reach out um, as we can. So yes, we do. Uh, same for Native Forward. You know we. Uh... Once you're once you're in our system, we we definitely probably reach out to you more than you would like. Um, but definitely just keep an eye on your email that you put into your application, as well as the phone number you use. And um, one little tidbit here is uh, make sure your voicemail box is not full because there's no way for us to, if there's no way for us to leave a message for you when we call you, um, then then there's no way for you to know we called. So definitely um, keep your voicemail box empty and then always check your email as well. Same thing for ACES, and we definitely encourage you to um, to reapply for scholarships if you're, you know, finishing your undergrad and going into your graduate. We have those opportunities, um, or your PhD as well. And so, definitely, um, as long as you're on your academic track, check out ACES. I know you're in the STEM field, of course. Yes, please uh, keep your email updated. Uh, we had a somebody that we've been reaching out to pretty regularly, and um, after. Uh, a handful of com or, uh, communications that was found out that they had changed their email address or no longer to check that one. So please uh, have an updated email address. If you're changing, reach, reach out to your COBOL scholarship um, team, which is us uh, here at COBOLscholars.org, um, and make sure that you have updated information so that we can contact you there. Um, and we're sending it out all the time, like Michael and Taylor were mentioning. Thank you. Another one would be. Um... For any high school students, if you're if you're applying for scholarships and you're using your high school email address, do keep in mind that a lot of, a lot of the high schools will uh, cut you off as soon as you walk across that stage. So if we try to reach out to you on that email, uh, we won't be able to reach you. So be sure to use a personal email address for that. It doesn't look like there's any more questions flowing into the chat. So um, I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, this evening and definitely be on um, the lookout in your emails um, for a follow-up email. Um, it'll most likely um, um, come from the, on behalf of the, the college fund with everyone's contact information here, as well as a recording of the video and the, and the presentations that were um, provided. Um, and I think uh, that's about it. If uh, anyone had anything else, but um, thank you all for joining, you know, the 2023 uh, Native Scholarship Forum um, and best of luck with all of your applications this year. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.